Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to sit down and do a video that a lot of you have asked me about. I've only waited like a year to do this. This video is on how to prepare your toddler for a new baby. I've had a lot of schooling and stuff in this area and now I have had a second baby so I'm just here to give you my tips and what worked for us. <laughs> really what worked for us was a lot of screen time. But okay, anyway, <laughs> good start. Uh, my name is Kayla. I make mommy and baby videos. My comments are back on. I can talk to you in the comments. So if you have any questions, any video ideas or requests, anything you want to say hello, comment down below. After two and a half years of my comments being disabled, that's insane. Subscribe if you want to see more mommy videos, more advice, more just like I'm in it with you. <laughs> Day in the life vlogs. I wanted to go through a little disclaimer. I know disclaimers are kind of annoying. I, you just want to get into the video, but this is really part of the video and it's really important. Remember and recognize and acknowledge that toddlers understand way more than we give them credit for. I mean, I know a lot of you know, like you let a word slip and then they say it at the grocery store very loudly a couple hours later and you're like, where the heck did you hear that from? They're like, you, mommy. We often still don't fully realize like how much they can understand and comprehend and also how much they can handle. Be confident in your kid. I know that each kid is different and that's the other part of this disclaimer. Each kid is different. Some kids are nurturing and some kids just have the personality of an oldest sibling and some kids it's just like literally don't care and that's okay it doesn't necessarily reflect on what their relationship is gonna be like when they're older just because your two-year-old is not obsessed with your newborn doesn't mean that they're gonna be enemies <laughs> later on in life so don't put that pressure on yourself don't put that pressure on your kid this situation with my kids you know might not be the same as your kids might not be the same as your cousin's kids your sister's kids these tips will vary based on toddler age definitely but also their personality anyway that's my little disclaimer my number one tip and mainly the whole gist of this video is to always hype them always be encouraging you can never hype a toddler enough you can never encourage them enough they get enough negativity from the world so in terms of baby you can never hype them enough <laughs> when we were talking to him anytime he was around his brother it was always you know encouraging things it was really hard at first because you want to emphasize gentle you know what I mean like gentle touch I always tried to err on the side of encouraging him rather than warning him he wasn't trying to scoop the whole baby up and walk away with him so he wasn't really putting Quinn in any danger so I wasn't very quick to say like oh buddy you don't know don't do that because that just made him very hesitant and not want to try it again and not want to be around him again like okay let's use our gentle touch you know good job literally anytime he was around the baby which was pretty often uh, we would say that's a great job buddy or you're such a good big brother I mean before Quinn was born that's another tip before baby is born you can be hyping their relationship how great of a big brother um, they might not act like they care but you're still putting it in the back of their mind especially if you say it often whether they go anywhere, do anything with the information that you're telling them. That's their personality. That's what they choose to do as a little two-year-old. For us, any chance we got, when I was pregnant, he would touch my belly and I'd say, oh, you're gonna be such a good big brother or, oh, he really likes when you touch his foot, if I knew his foot was in the area. Or he would sing songs and I'd say, oh, he likes listening to you sing. For us, I don't know that every kid would be like this, but it just created this relationship between the two of them before he was even here. So then when baby got here, we had hyped him so much, but also talked about how Beckham was gonna be such a good big brother for so long and so much that he knew, like he just stepped into his role. <laughs> I wrote down that we would do this for months. We still do it for the rest of his life. I'll say, you know what, buddy, you're a great leader. But even when was like five or six months old and he's just sitting there bouncing in his chair <laughs> watching Beckham, Beckham would do something really silly. And I'd say like, oh, Quinn thinks that's so funny. So for the short period in Quinn's life, I'm speaking for him. Did he really think that was funny? I don't think so. Now he laughs at him at 11 months old. He kind of looks at him and he's like, he does. And he does it again. 
fun and it just creates this playful interaction between the two of them it's buying toys before baby comes i have a video on this that i posted pretty soon after quinn was born i wasn't worried about big brother being spoiled or i mean none of that was on my mind and if it was i shut it down quick because when you have a newborn and you have a toddler you're in survival mode that's not to like scare you off or anything but you're surviving and you're trying to get through it and enjoy it whatever you have to do to get through the days and kind of survive the days and keep everybody fed and halfway happy so we bought him toys if you're wondering how the heck are they gonna play with their own toys for five minutes because I play with them all the time. I'm their constant form of entertainment. Know that when we had Quinn, all of a sudden Beckham stepped into that role and really thrived almost playing by himself and, and learning that way. So take heart that your kid might eventually, even if they have a rough transition, adapt into that role and, and fill time on their own because they have to. Honestly, the next tip is a little taboo. Everybody is gonna have their own opinion on this. Yeah, but I'll tell you what we did. So, screen time. I mean, it, it literally saved us. You moms out there, um, there is no guilt in this space on this channel, no shame, no judgment for utilizing screen time. I will tell you right now, this is just a little rant, I guess, Beckham has learned so much. He learned how to write his letters, even though I would write work on him in books and stuff, because they have a little app that you can just trace your finger and do a little game and learn how to write an A. That's how we survived. That is literally how I got through my days was the tablet sometimes. An easy tip to do is to buy a baby doll before a baby is born and give that to your toddler. I mean, I would say especially if they're girls, but boys can play with dolls too. I bought one for Beckham and he didn't take a whole ton of interest in it, but he did play with it. He did have a stroller. We talked about how when baby brother would come, he would have his stroller and Beckham would ride in his wagon and he'd help feed the little baby some bottles sometimes. One thing, they had little pacifiers and then he knew when Quinn was born to go grab his pacifier and popping in his mouth, which Quinn took for like two days. <laughs> he did not take pacifiers at all, but uh, they can learn from that. They can feel responsible with that. It's a really good way to prep them. Another thing is to buy a gift. One baby brother could buy big brother a gift. You know, you come home with baby brother and say, oh, look what big, you know, baby brother got you a balloon, which we did. Or you could do it where big brother has a gift for baby brother for quick COVID hit and he couldn't go in the hospital. So we brought home baby brother a balloon and Beckham a balloon. I think just knowing that it's going to be a tough transition sometimes for them is just one of the best things that you can do for yourself. And then if it's not so tough for them, oh, well, hey, that wasn't too bad. But if it was tough, you're prepared. One of the ways to kind of help them adjust is to not feel like mommy was taken from them. And that's so hard to do. It was just really hard to give Beckham any attention and any time. And outside of a pandemic, I think it would work a little better because you can enlist help. <laughs> but as soon as you can, don't push yourself or guilt yourself or pressure yourself. But as soon as you can, try and give toddler some one-on-one. -on -one. For our, some people, that means go take them for ice cream. We were in a pandemic, but also I don't leave the house much. For me, it was literally just doing bedtime. I had always done bedtime until baby was born, basically. And all of a sudden, dad had taken over and he was okay with it. But until I finally was just like, okay, you know what? I feel okay. Taylor, you hold Quinn. Let's do bedtime. And maybe some of you will be okay to do bedtime right away and not have as hard of a recovery as I did. Some C-section mamas will have a harder recovery than I did, but... For me, I didn't push myself to give him one-on-one -on -one a time. Maybe I should have done it earlier, but I did try to do it fairly quickly. It was within a week, you know, and I still saw him throughout the day. I didn't ignore him the whole time, but, but I guess the last thing I have to say, and I didn't mean for this video to just be kind of cliche things. This is literally just what went through my mind when I thought of the craziness that last July and August of 2020 were, is to give yourself grace and to give your kid grace. That's just the gist of all of it. They, they need grace and it's so easy to say that and hard to do sometimes, but 
give yourself grace, definitely, especially yourself. If you are hanging in there, if you're watching this video trying to prepare yourself for making life the best for your toddler or the best for your baby during this transition time, then you're a great mom. And it shows that you care and that means that you're a great mom. So give yourself grace. Don't be too hard on yourself. Literally, so many of us view this time. Other people love it. Other people thrive. So many others of us view this time as kind of a survival period. So if that's what it feels like you're doing, know that you're not alone in it. It's insane. It, I love my children, but it was survival mode <laughs> for a couple months there. Take some deep breaths, get some fresh air, go out on the deck, take some breathers, and just give yourself grace. You know, they're two or three or four and a newborn. So believe it or not, if they watch a lot of screen time one day <laughs> or you freak out at them one time and then you tell them you're sorry. They're not going to remember a lot of these things anyway. So <laughs> hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. If you think of like more questions and maybe I can think of some more tips on this topic, but if you think of any more questions you have or like related video ideas to this topic especially, let me know down below in the comments because a lot of you wanted to see this video. Let me know what you want to see more of. But to make sure to subscribe down below if you want to see more videos like this. Other than that, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!